scouts are wrapping up their journey across the Corn Belt for the final day of the Pro Farmer Crop Tour. Ted Seifred will join us live from the fields. A new ban on a widely used pesticide. The ability of farmers and ranchers to do what they do best, care for the land and raise crops and livestock. People to weigh in on how they should regulate the waters of the U.S. Good Thursday to you. Thank you so much for making Market Day Report a part of your day. I'm Tammy Arender. Well, scouts are wrapping up their journey across the Corn Belt for the final day of the Pro Farmer Crop Tour. While drought continues to be the talk of Iowa, fields in some portions of the state are showing impressive emergence. Our friend Ted Seifred with Zaner Ag Hedge joins us now from the road for an update. Ted, enjoy your reports all week long. So let's get a recap of yesterday's findings for Iowa corn and soybeans. Yeah, you know, uh, wow, we saw a lot of really good areas in Iowa. The big contrast on the western side is last year we were looking at a lot of areas that were uh, really kind of their worst drought since 2012. And then also those Duraco hit areas. This is a, a night and day situation, what we were looking at yesterday. These areas were actually coming back and really good. Now, there were some tougher portions toward northern Iowa, Iowa. Uh, but southwestern, central west, we were seeing some really big yields. Uh, yeah, I think somebody pulled a 280 yesterday. Uh, but just, you know, overall, there was a, a whole bunch of 220s to 240s, a lot of really good corn and a lot of really good soybean pod count. So that's going to pull it up. We want to see what the east is finding. They started it yesterday. They're going to finish it up today. So we'll get a little Iowa number later on this evening. Uh, but Iowa it looked really, really good. Uh, again, some small spot areas. And the, the areas that were, were uh, sort of marginal, like there was a transition area, you could see some cracks in the ground and the dirt was dry, but you could also tell that, that was, those were crops that had gotten rain earlier in the season and they were just kind of holding on and trying to get to maturity. One more good rain would really help. So, you know, hopefully that'll happen. There is some rain in the forecast for later on, uh, late this week into the weekend. Oh, that's good. We need Mother Nature to cooperate. So where are you now and how are things looking there? Yeah, so right right outside of Truman, Minnesota, uh, so south central uh, Minnesota. And, you know, we started our day uh, in Worthington and kind of have been working our way across the state. We'll end up in, in Rochester tonight. We've we've spent uh, most of our We just got into District 8, but we've spent all morning District 7. District 7 it looks pretty good if you're on the southern half of it. I knew leaving this morning that my route was one of, going to be one of the better routes. And for our corn average for the day so far, we're at 210.9. That compares to 203.2 last year and a three-year average of 174.7. So we're seeing some good corn. Now, we've got uh, scouts 20, 40 miles north of us that are reporting much different uh, scenario. They're, they're seeing much rougher conditions. Uh, so it'll be interesting at the end of the day what we come up with. We're also expecting that uh, our route, the route that I'm having, um, the second half of our day, we're going to get into some of the tougher areas as well. Uh, but the soybeans may be the bigger surprise. Uh, our average so far, average pod count has been 1,307. That compares to 1,046 for the three-year average and 1,101 for last year. So the pod count's there. Now, here's the thing about soybeans. When I walk into a cornfield or when I'm walking alongside a soybean field, You've got dry soils and big cracks in the soil. So kind of like what we just talked about in Iowa, you can see that these crops started out really well this year, but we're really at the point where we need rain really, really soon. And that's a bigger problem for the soybeans. This, the corn is somewhat pushing along to maturity. You know, you've got a real nice dent here. So, you know, another rain will help, but it's not absolutely paramount for the corn. The soybeans, you know, you've got pods that are still filling out. And a lot of these pods, if it doesn't get rain soon, are going to end up getting aborted. Uh, so it, it's, it's, we're taking a snapshot of what we're seeing right now. Mm -hmm. But for the soybeans in particular, you need that rain to finish it out. Definitely do. All about timing. That's Ted Seifred with Zaner Ag Hedge. Thank you so much for being with us and giving us these updates from the field.